So let's start with what everyone wants to know, fat, fat gain. Is it possible that something with no calories can actually make you gain weight? A lot of people will say they've never seen a skinny person drinking a diet soda. And there are some like observational studies that have found that among people who consume the most artificial sweeteners, they're the most likely to be overweight. But this could just be observational, right? Like it's also possible that people who are overweight are more likely to consume diet products. So it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. But we can't ignore the observational studies, right? Like, I think that is huge that every observational study that has been shown, the more, I think it's like the more Splenda or any sort of non-nutritive sweetener you do use, you know, the higher rate of obesity, the higher rate of metabolic disease. That's one potential issue that isn't that controversial. Like there's a decent amount of research suggesting that if you consume a lot of intensely sweet stuff, whether it's like sugary or artificially sweet, it can like mess with your sensitivity to sweetness and you enjoy naturally sweet stuff like fruit a little bit less. Now, a lot of the evidence on this when it comes to artificial sweeteners is among people who drink like many diet sodas per day. And also, of course, if you're someone who tracks your calories, make sure you eat the right amount of calories that you have logged down, then you're gonna stick to your calorie goal. But look, the average person just consumes their food based on appetite. And if you're worried that artificial sweeteners might mess with that, there's a bit of evidence to support that. I guess my general feeling is I'm not super worried about it, but if I see a lot of them in someone's nutrition log, then I kind of wonder, well, what are they doing or what are they trying to make up for? You know, if they're really trying to cut calories and they just like things that are sweet, over time, I'd rather kind of titrate them down to enjoy things that are a little bit more bitter, try to not seek things that are sweet all the time. In terms of, do I think they're horrible? Eh, probably not. Some researchers found that when compared to sugar, the brain's food reward pathways don't quite react in the same way when you're having artificial sweetness. Like the body doesn't quite recognize it as food, so it doesn't reduce appetite in the same way as if you're actually, you know, eating calories. And researchers found that with like a lot of the big hitters in the artificial sweetener world. You know, you got sucralose, acesulfame potassium, aspartame, like there's decent evidence for this. So maybe if you're eating a whole lot of artificial sweeteners, it's possible you might eat more later on. So I think the biggest problem with the artificial sweeteners is the way they cause your taste buds to crave this ultra sweet, you know, taste. And then also there's a lot of research that shows, you know, that you actually overcompensate and end up hungrier later and eating later. And it also shows that you tend to, you know, crave um, more intense sweet foods. So like, like I said with the mango, like maybe the mango will no longer be sweet enough for you. So you need that cupcake. Now there is plenty of research that conflicts with this though, like including this meta-analysis of 15 randomized controlled trials that found no links with the weight gain, which is why this is such a tricky topic because everyone has different studies they can point to to make their case. Nonetheless, pretty decent evidence that if you're eating a lot of artificial sweeteners, it might make you crave sweet things more often and a little evidence that it might affect your appetite. So at least there's a case we made to not have artificial sweeteners like all day, every day. So do these products cause a spike in insulin? Insulin management, like figuring out if something spikes your insulin can be pretty important if you have diabetes or if insulin management is an important part of your fitness or physique goals. The answer is a big, fat, unsatisfying maybe. There is some evidence that you get a spike in insulin with artificial sweetness, there's some evidence that it doesn't. There's more evidence to suggest that it might happen if you're overweight or if you have diabetes, but short of like getting a blood stick and monitoring your own insulin levels, it's pretty hard to get a firm answer on this one. There's a quote from uh, the American Diabetes Association, even kind of telling people to be weary of using these beverages. I think you have to take it all with a grain of salt though, right? So if I have a diabetic patient who comes in and talks to me and is drinking seven regular Cokes a day, for him, a Diet Coke might be a better option, right? But for the average person, you know, avoiding the artificial sweetener in general is going to be the better option. But you have to work with people where they're at which begs the question, if I'm going to be drinking soda anyway, is it better to have a diet one than a naturally sweetened one? Ms. Meshlam just doesn't think that's a good question. If your goal is weight loss, I firmly believe that both regular Coke and Diet Coke are going to hinder you in some way. Even if you track calories, I think if you're drinking that Diet Coke, it is doing something, whether that be to your gut microbiome, whether that be to the you know, sweetness that you crave later in the day and then you tend to overeat. But I really think if you're serious about your health, it, both options can't be an everyday thing. They can be a sometimes thing, right? We're human, like having a Diet Coke 
once every two weeks. I don't care about that, right? If you enjoy it and it makes you happy, that's fine. But I think if you're really looking for to better yourself and to better your health, neither option. So it's just like a really tough area to navigate. Most really high quality like randomized control trials, including this meta-analysis of 155 of them, have found no real reason to avoid them. But like Ms. Meshlam, she works with gastrointestinal orders, and she's found that among patients who have digestive problems and who consume a lot of artificial sweeteners, removing them from the diet always makes a pretty big difference. Of course, that is anecdotal data. There is some evidence that a lot of this kind of stuff can mess with your gut microbiome, like all the bacteria living in your belly. Most of that evidence though is on rodents and a lot of these studies, not all of them, but a lot of them, they use like really high amounts of artificial sweeteners, more than you could actually consume during a day. You know, they're like, oh, it's horrible. And you look at the dose, you're like, holy crap, that's a massive dose. Like the amount of sucralose you need in most products is like so tiny. For humans, we just don't really have a lot of great data. Like some research has suggested a similar effect, like even consuming reasonable amounts, but the effect isn't consistent. And as Ms. Meshlam notes, a lot of these studies, they aren't long-term. Like most of the highest quality studies, they're short-term. For longer-term studies, we just don't have a lot of evidence. So, mm. I get this is kind of an unsatisfying conclusion, but the truth is that most high quality studies don't really have an issue with them, especially if you're just having like a couple of diet sodas a week. The most evidence, like the strongest evidence we have is that possibly having a lot of them, it might increase your appetite or make you less sensitive to sweet stuff. So that's something you wanna be mindful of. A good solution to that is just to track your calories, but not everyone does. So try and be mindful of if you're eating more when you're having artificial sweetness. There's a little bit of evidence, like maybe tiny amount of evidence that could mess with your gut microbiome. If that's a concern for you, taking probiotic bacteria and eating plenty of fiber is gonna go a long way to fixing that. A lot of people, they're just gonna say, use your common sense with these. But like different experts have different definitions of common sense. Like here's what Ms. Meshlam says, which talks about how to be intuitive about this topic. It doesn't really matter what, you know, if this little study showed this and this showed that. Intuitively, we're meant to eat things that are natural. So, you know, staying away from things like Splenda and aspartame are just a good idea because that means that you're staying away from really processed food. And you don't need a study to tell you that like real whole foods are always going to be more nurturing and better for your weight, your health, your mental health, everything. Dr. Nelson, meanwhile, thinks that common sense dictates that they're probably fine. And I always go with the kind of the common sense thing too. It's like, okay, the amount of diet products that are sold and the amount of pounds of artificial sweeteners that are used and the fact that we don't know 100% for sure it's conclusive tells me it's probably not as bad as we thought. Right? If everyone's out licking arsenic, they start dropping dead, you figure out pretty soon that that's bad. But, <laughs> so it's probably not as bad as what we think then. Again, that's you know a common sense, not a scientific approach. So look, it's best to minimize excessively sweet things throughout the day, whether it's natural or artificial. It's best to keep an eye on your calories and it's best to do what you can to keep your gut healthy. Otherwise, you can be okay with the fact that most research and the FDA and every government on earth has approved them for use, or you can stick closer to the philosophy that we should just eat whole foods and minimize anything artificial to remove the risk in case there is some potential problems down the road. I don't know, it's up to you. That's all I got, that's all I've got for you. I wanna thank Marissa Meshlam for coming on here today and also Dr. Mike T. Nelson for offering their expertise. I'm super grateful for that. And make sure you subscribe as well because I've got a whole lot more videos on nutrition coming up.